Today's topic is all about the American fashion style. For all my ladies living in the States or perhaps traveling or living in Europe, this one is for you. The summer vacation season is coming up and many of us planning to travel and if Europe happens to be your destination, you might find this helpful. I for one cannot look at one more video on how Americans should dress in Europe. Every single one of them out there is about suggestion to dress up over and over over again. I made a video with the same concept I think last summer. Is it really the solution? Are we missing something? In my recent travels, I didn't see tourists dressed in leggings, weapons, or joggers. Is it an outdated myth that we like to tarnish the American athleisure with every opportunity that we get, especially in comparison with European fashion? Has anyone bothered to understand why Americans dress how they dress? So let's take a look. Now to give you a little bit of background here, I was born and raised in Europe and thus my accent and I moved to the States over 15 years ago. The culture shock is real on so many levels. From living in Europe to not here in the States and then back there visiting again after all the information that I have from not only researching travel fashion guidelines for my own videos but to search again within the last couple of months and read about the latest European trends, reading what experienced travelers and bloggers have to say on this topic to actually being there in person and see with my own eyes. Purchasing an entire wardrobe wearing new clothes to fit in is not what I did, nor what I recommend you do when traveling and wanting to look stylish. But I will get to that in a little bit. So let's talk about the American fashion style. For those who don't know, it's not a dress down approach, but rather a casual style. I talk a lot about dressing up on my channel because that's what I I saw growing up and a little bit on their minded, isn't it? While researching for my last trip to Italy on how do Europeans dress, it crossed my mind to research how do Americans dress? How did I not think of this before? And the answer was right there, shockingly obvious in my face. So let's understand the origin once and for all. Americans dress casual, but why? And I quote, because clothes are freedom to choose how we present ourselves and to blur the lines between men and woman, old and young, rich and poor. The rise of the casual style undermined millennia-old rules that dictated noticeable luxury for the rich and functioning work clothes for the poor. This is a quote from USA Today. Think about what this means for a second. If there's a movement where culturally we get the majority of the population to dress in a way that erases economical lines, age stereotyping, and where we can't be easily judged and labeled as rich or poor, the choice to wear gender neutral clothes after thousands of years of labeling based on financial potential, why are we calling this freedom lazy and somehow making it less valuable than the traditional European designs. When I saw this association between American and casualness, it was an aha moment. If Europeans travel to the States, I hope you research and adapt as well because I can't stop reading and seeing videos on how to dress like a tourist in Europe. And funny enough, most exaggerated examples are showing flip-flops and Daisy Duke shorts. Like really? Is this how we describe an entire culture's fashion style? I think we need to appreciate the free freedom of choice that American fashion contributes to the industry as a whole. Yes, I still like to wear dresses and heels and makeup, but I also like the choice that I can wear jeans on casual Friday if I want to, that we can all wear whatever we want without being judged or frowned upon. And I think most of us appreciate this freedom and options. So my goal for today is to provide a different perspective, to stop looking at the American style as a downgrade from elegance and myself included and instead appreciate and accept it as a standalone style. Now if dressing down is full pot, then why not dressing up? It's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Believe me, I've been in plenty of these scenarios where I was the one with my nose up thinking, oh, but everyone else doesn't have taste or know how to dress. I surely can be the problem, even though I was the foreigner. Casualness is not a disease, it's a lifestyle choice and quite a popular one here 
here in the States. The t-shirts, jeans, sweaters, and wrinkle-free shirts make it the middle-class American uniform. This is in part why so many wear it. The majority of us consider ourselves as middle-class. And if worldwide we see more casualness, perhaps just like any other choice, people are inclined to adopt what they feel comfortable with and in. We can't control what other people like to wear, we can only control our own style. We see examples everywhere on social media, magazines, music videos, Netflix shows. We find similarities or strive for a look and then we learn to emulate it. And over time, perhaps we change our minds and adopt a different look that fits a more current lifestyle as we evolve. But there's not one ideal style and everything else is inferior. Perhaps spending $100 at Lululemon is the upsell version of a teen casual look for a reason. The casual look takes many forms, from the jersey to the Levi's, which are popular in Europe as well, but remember that it was made in America since 1860. Here's where jeans were invented, and let me tell you, Americans know how to make jeans. Women didn't start wearing pants till 1930s and became mainstream in the 50s, still debated in the 60s, that's less than 60 years ago. And then the cardigan, jeans, and t-shirt was adopted and men started wearing long hair. The casual style is quintessential to American culture, to live or dream of living carefree, fast and loose. Now let's talk about the American tourist label. And if you are American dressed casually, travel abroad and see English women or French or Spanish dressed up, don't feel bad. It's part of their culture, what they've seen all their lives. Just like you've seen jeans, hoodies, cowboy boots, and t-shirts all yours. Now, I remember I first saw the cowboy style, love it or hate it, they're such an American staple, which like so many international women coming here, I couldn't wait to experience, along with the amusement parks and my childhood characters on a t-shirt and quality jeans that will last for lots of seasons. It's all part of the American experience. Now, when we travel, we dress for comfort. Why is there a need to all of a sudden purchase a whole new wardrobe so you can blend in with the locals? They can tell you're a tourist from a mile away or, you know, just up close when you speak with an accent or in a foreign language. I don't think we should hide that we're tourists. Be inquisitive and curious about the culture and I found that most people that service tourists are delighted to share and help. Helping others makes us feel better. I like to play the tourist card, why would I hide it? I feel that it's much more advantageous to look like you know less and let others lead the way. You avoid more pitfalls this way in foreign countries, so if you don't want to be used, always ask. As the saying goes, you open your mouth or your wallet. Back to the attire, the most common advice to wear leather sneakers and loafers to look like one of them. Now, maybe for a casual day where I walk 5,000 steps between work and home. In Rome, where I did 24,000 steps in one day, it's new balance all the way. Don't compromise on comfort. And I don't care how comfortable your white leather sneakers are, you don't see athletes run a marathon in them, do you? Because that's what it takes to walk around in a European city from morning to night. Now, if you go for a casual stroll for Instagram selfies and back to the hotel, then you can probably wear whatever you want. But when when we talk about exploration of a new city, you don't want to cut it short because you didn't bring enough bandages. Now, if you take breaks and return to the hotel during the day or change, sure, you can decide what your tolerance level is. But ladies, let me tell you a little secret. Men always dress for comfort and you don't see them walk around all day in leather shoes. Let's take a cue from them. I'm talking to my husband when packing. I have six pairs laid out, right? And asking him how to fit them in the luggage. This bear I can walk five hours in, this one three hours, this one eight, and he's looking at me like, why are you bringing any shoes that hurt you? And my response, well, all shoes hurt me after a while. I'm not used to walking all day till my feet fall off and then back to the hotel and the next day start all over. Think I care about looking stylish when inside I'm crying in pain? No. 
When I already know the expiration on each pair that I own, do you think I want to risk bringing a new pair I never tested out before and spend more and be uncomfortable and unnatural in new shoes? I know this is against all advice you see out there. Europeans are not on a pedestal. There's not one culture better than other. Sure, we take inspiration from the French and Italian, but each style and adoption of it is unique and valuable. Always be yourself, look like yourself, wear what makes you happy, what brings you joy. Borrow and adapt looks from different cultures, from examples that you like, regardless of proximity. I highly disapprove of buying new clothes for a trip though, especially shoes. You should wear what you already have. And on the tourist note, don't you think tourists should also be respected more? As an American traveling to Europe or anyone traveling there, choosing to spend your vacation in a foreign country where you could have spent your money anywhere else in the world should be appreciated. Do I look like a tourist? Yes, I do. And that alone translates into someone that has come to visit your country, your history, to spend in your economy. Don't make fun of my fashion choice simply because you're not accustomed to it or don't wear it. As adults, I find that we repeat the habits that we've been seeing growing up from food to manners to clothing. Fashion acceptance to me looks very different now. Perhaps if we start thinking about people's style choices as a true representation of what they like without attaching a number scale to it, our interactions will be more meaningful. For example, I see the university sweatshirt being worn at my workplace on a Tuesday or a football jersey. And to be honest, if I looked at it as tasteless before, now I see it's a choice, especially that I know this person had vast exposure to a European countries. It's also an element of pride to represent yourself and your home on foreign land. Don't let that go. Adapt if you want to blend in, share your own style abroad. Either way, it's meaningful. Now, how do I recommend to dress abroad? Mix both. I like to do research. It's as simple as a Google search on how to dress in Spain in August or wherever month you're going in. And you will have a general guideline to what people wear mindful of the forecast. There are plenty of blogs from people who actually visited these lands with recommendations to give with, you know, just within this range, let's say short skirt, sandals, short sleeve, you look in your own closet and pick them out. Once you lay everything out you chose on the bed, you can think about mix and matching, how many days you're staying, etc. Now, if you have special plans for a dinner or a show, make sure you check on their website for a dress code. Especially in Europe, they tend to mention it for good reason. So pack an evening dress and shoes perhaps, or a blazer for men. In the Vatican, for example, skirts and dresses must be lower than the knee. Now, it was mentioned on their site, and guess what? I saw two women wear skirts above the knee. Do you think the guard stopped them from entering? No, and I'm sure they didn't lose sleep over it either. So for these special events, I would pack one or two items intentionally, but still from your own wardrobe. Don't buy something new to experiment on a trip. If you really want to, try it out before you go. Many times we can feel discomfort until like one hour in of sitting. Shoes? Forget it. Never ever buy new shoes for a trip unless it's a last resort. If you get all excited and want something new, why not save it to shop at your destination? where everything is different than you're accustomed to, and it makes a great souvenir, or even better, an opportunity to buy a staple piece. Another tip is to look up what is the country known for manufacturing. Italians have leather, so I knew I will be buying my work backpack and leather gloves. You can also look up the best fashion brands made in that country to shop at lower prices and authentic pieces when you get there. Also, be open to smaller shops that are away from the main tourist attraction attractions for the real hidden gem. And specialty stores that sell hats or gloves or shoes are always a good choice if you're looking for specific pieces that you're missing. Key takeaway from this video is to dress American all the way if this is the style you enjoy. Wear your pieces with pride and don't feel bad for not dressing like everyone else. Remember how much the American style has contributed to the acceptance of casual attire worldwide. And no, the grass is not greener on the other side. It might be of different shape or height, but at the end of the day, it's still grass.